Welcome to another Secant Technology quick demonstration of SolidWorks capabilities. Today we're going to draw a hopper with all of its sides done at one time. We're going to start out by creating a sketch of 48 by 24 and we're going to create another plane that's offset down below this plane. And we're going to sure 24 inches, fine. Let's throw another rectangle in here. Uh, we could make the sides equal, but in case you need to have a rectangular bottom in here, I'm just going to put two dimensions on here, six by six. And we'll do a loft on this. Throw a sketch on top here. We'll do a two-inch offset on that, which will give us a two-inch overhang on our flange. And we'll make it uh, 0.12 thick, about 11 gauge. in here and we're gonna shell this thing out so that we'll have 0.12 all the way around it now right now this is all one part so we're gonna break this thing up into four separate pieces so that we can make a uh, four different pieces of metal on here and pretty much all we have to do to break this thing up is just make a 2d sketch Go to our features and split the part. You can also use this when you're doing uh, mold pieces and things like that as well. It's a, it's a neat, neat little tool. You can see out here we've got four total separate pieces now, and we're going to come in and create just a relief cut in here. Um, even though we haven't converted this to sheet metal yet, um, we want to go ahead and get this done now. Uh, do a relief cut on all these tabs on the ex outside of this so let me put a couple of lines in here to mirror with just like we would in AutoCAD and we'll just do the mirror command pick that pick what we're going to mirror around go to that side do the same thing again pick those two relief cuts go to the other side get ourselves an isometric do a feature extrude cut through all and uh, we really don't want to select the two side panel pieces, we'll select the front and back panel. And now we've got to convert this stuff to sheet metal, and doing that is pretty much picking the convert to sheet metal button. We pick that face there, we give it our material thickness and our radius for our bins. Of course you can always come back and override those later. And we'll do the same thing here, and again we'll give it our thickness and radius. And do the same thing again. All I'm doing is hitting enter to get back into the same command tube, by the way. 0 0.12, 0 0.12. For those of you who are used to Inventor, you'll notice that everything's like nice and clean over here in the in the uh, task pane over here so that it's not all up in your grill covering up your geometry. And here's a nice little flat pattern layout of that side uh, back panel, and here's the side panel. Alright, so now we need to throw, uh, and here's just a nice little detail here of the of that relief cut and the bends in there. So let's throw in a uh, few uh, cuts in here to bolt this thing on to uh, something else. So let's just say a half an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, and let's locate this thing somewhere relative to our part. Uh, seven eighths, and let's maybe run a couple inches over here from the edge. And we'll just cut this thing through. Uh, let's do it here. And we'll just link that to the thickness. So that way, if we ever do change the material to the thickness, <clears throat> it'll do that, which is kind of a neat thing to know. Uh, we're just going to tell it to fill this whole thing in. So no matter how long this hopper gets in the future, it's going to automatically fill this thing in. Uh, every four inches, it'll place a, uh, a cut in here. Or a Alright, so now all I'm doing here is just copying that cut that we just made. I need to come in here and rotate this one around. So we'll come up here to our rotate command. Pick on that part, pick our center. Just type in 90 degrees, tell it OK. Throw a couple of dimensions on here. Uh, maybe four inches here, because we have a two inch flange, right? And then we'll do uh, uh, seven eighths again here. And we hit escape, we're already, it was already a cut, so now all we've got to do is come in here and do our fill pattern. Pick what we're patterning, and uh, make it every four inches again. 
<laughs> and this time we just want to select that side or that piece and let's come in here and mirror these to the other pieces on the other side and here we're just telling it that we only want to cut into that piece just like we did when we did those relief cuts and again here we're just going to mirror those features to the other side no point in doing the work twice right okay so now we've pretty much got that whole thing put together let's go look at our flat pattern here you see it's got our flat pattern with our holes in there, our slots and I think we want to go in here and we'll save it real quick call it super hopper because it's pretty much once you've drawn this you've made all the hoppers you ever need to make that are are uh, centered on each other we're going to go in here and make some drawings real quick just do a front view side view top view isometric come in here and maybe uh, shade this isometric view go back and show you how the weldment cuts list works inside of the model first I'm going to update this and you'll notice that uh, it automatically shows us two and two of those two parts. We're going to add our descriptions in here. Front and back uh, hopper plates. And here we'll do um, the side hopper plate. And we'll go look at our cuts list table here. You can see it's got item one and item two. And the cool thing with this is when we go back to our drawing, all those descriptions are updated automatically. And we're going to auto balloon this. Let's go ahead and run everything over here to the left. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and balloon all the parts because sometimes that's a little nicer on something that doesn't have this many balloons on it. And just want to show you that you can actually move the balloon locations. Let's move this balloon location. We're moving it from part two over here to part one. Notice that the balloons are smart and know what part they're actually touching. So let's throw some dimensions on this view here. Just some overall dimensions. Maybe just a height dimension here. Obviously, you're going to throw a little more detail on this, but just for brevity's sake, we're just throwing a few dimensions on here. Um, SOLIDWORKS is really cool with cleaning up dimensions. Notice how it automatically changes you know, our uh, extension lines there to the other side and leaves a nice gap where it's supposed to, where you would expect it to, right? Um, and then we'll just throw this little dimension down below here. It shows that uh, opening. So let's go back to our hopper and just to reiterate, we've now made all the hoppers, right? So we just double click on here, change a few dimensions here. Let's change this one to 28. We'll make that 8. Make that 32. Let's maybe make this um, 60. And uh, do the update button. Pow. Now we've got everything all updated in there. Go back and look at our drawings and look at our dimensions. See that everything updated in our drawing. Might have to move some views and stuff around, but you know, that's it's not that big of a deal, right? You didn't have to redraw all your hopper again. Let's go back here, and we know that everyone takes this stuff out and they send it out to what? Their laser cutting machine, so or the plasma. Let's uh, tell it that we're going to extrude this stuff out to DXF. You couldn't really see that down on the menu, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to tell it to replace that part, and we're going to tell it that one, and we want to keep our bend lines in there. And let's put this into separate files. Tell it OK. And just like that, it saves out the DXF versions of those flat pattern layouts. Um, we see the one view here, and then here's the side panel. Let's tell it to save. Let's go open up our trusty AutoCAD down here so that we can show you that it's opening up a DXF. And you can see here, there's the one view. And let's just throw a quick dimension on here just so you can see that it pulled the whole thing in. Uh, you know, in one-to-one -one units, which is what you'd want for your laser. And we'll go ahead and get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this video on SolidWorks multi-body sheet metal capabilities. Uh, be sure to visit us on the web at www.secanttech.com. Thanks.